Hey, Brother Clinton here. Greetings in Jesus' name. And welcome back to the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. Um, a brother asked me this evening about uh, the testimony of how I came out of the Trinitarian doctrine into the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And I've shared this before in testimony videos. There's a few of them on this channel, but um, I've never actually specifically shared this part of my testimony in a separate video. So I thought that it would be good to do that, not only to give this to you, brother, who asked, but also to bless whoever else out there might be needing to hear this message this evening. Because the manifold wisdom of God is so great, and when he... When I get on my knees and I pray and I ask him to give me the words, and then I come over here to my desk and I turn on the camera, he does just that. And so many people write me all the time saying, you know, God sent that message through you right on time, and I just needed to hear that today. And this and that has been happening in my life, and, and God just confirmed it by the things you just said. That happens to me all the time, and I praise God for that. And so I trust that will be the case with this message as well. So here's the thing. Um, I used to believe in the Trinity like everybody else. I was born again in 1994. October 7th, October 7th, 1994 is the day that I was born again. And uh, I wasn't saved at that point because I didn't know about the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I was born again, and my life had changed on that day. I went to the same church that I had been going to for a long time, um, but I had never heard the Word of God before, although I listened to it many times, I had never heard it before. And that day I heard the Word of God. And it was, uh, it was like I said, on October 7th, 1994, and it was at a little um, church called the Church in the Wind, which is a sister organization of the Assemblies of God. And the Church in the Wind was a little biker church where everybody there had long hair and leather and... Um, and that was kind of the way I lived my life as well. I had long hair like a woman down to my waist and, you know, wore leather and chains and that kind of thing. And um, so that's where I felt comfortable and that's where I went to church. And on October 7th, 1994 was the first time in my life I ever actually heard the Word of God. The pastor was preaching with such an anointing on him. Now, he wasn't in the faith of Jesus Christ. And he didn't know how to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he was preaching about righteousness and sin and judgment and the fear of God came upon me and I felt as if I was the only person in the room like there was a spotlight on not like I was the only person in the room but but that that I was the only person visible in the room I felt like there was a spotlight right on me and all my filthy sins were exposed before the whole world and I was just weeping like a little child weeping like a little baby and that day during that that religious service somebody took me up to the altar and said, pray this prayer, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he told me that because I had said that prayer, I had become a Christian. Well, I know now that that wasn't true, but I was born again that day. And I, I didn't get born again by saying a sinner's prayer. I got born again because God put his word in me and brought forth life in me. And I began to serve God from that day, from that day. I began to read the scripture and understand it. I began to stop cursing and swearing. I began to stop listening to the same music I used to listen to. I began to stop looking at pornography. Um, I began to stop doing the things that I was doing and start serving God according to his word. I started to seek him in his word and, and do what he said. And that was the beginning of my walk with Jesus Christ. Shortly after that, I went to prison because when I got born again, I was actually on something that we call OR, which means that you're released on your own recognizance. I had committed a crime, and I, w I went to jail, and I was released on the third day uh, for, actually, the crime was an armed bank robbery. This was back in 1994. My natural brother and I actually robbed a bank on 19th Avenue in Dunlap in Phoenix, Arizona, with weapons, our firearms. Thank God nobody got killed. Um, so... We went to jail. I was released three days later by a miracle from God, and I had six months before our trial. And during that six months was this period that I just explained to you where I got born again. And so I went to prison. And in prison, uh, you know, a few months later, I learned about the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, I didn't know about the gift of the Holy Ghost, although I had read through the Bible once or twice. First time I read through the Bible, it was the Living Bible. 
uh, because I had a King James Bible, but somebody who didn't know the Lord, who said he was a Christian, handed me a living Bible and said, you know, this will be easier for you to understand, so why don't you read this? So I trusted him that, you know, he, was, he said he was a Christian. I trusted him, so I put my King James Bible away, and I started to read the living Bible, and I read through it all the way, uh, all the way through, and then as soon as I was done, I took my King James Bible again and began to read it, just because I knew in my heart that was my Father's Word at that point. I didn't know anything about why that was the case. I just knew it in my heart. So a few months later, I didn't know anything about the gift of the Holy Ghost, and somebody showed me from the Scripture about the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I said, wow, this is awesome, and I, had, I didn't even know about this. And so I went to the Lord in prayer, and I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that was on July 20, that was on July 6th, 1995. Praise the Lord. Um, and I received the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues and prophesy, bless the Lord. And so, but I still wasn't saved um, because I hadn't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ yet. And so I continued to serve the Lord and read his word, study his word. I was a diligent seeker of the scripture, um, or I should say a diligent student of the scripture, seeking God with all my heart by his grace. I'm not saying that to you know pat me on the back, but by the grace of God, I was able to do that. And... Um, it came to pass about th three years later that, um, and I was still in prison at the time. I was in prison for nine years, from 1995 until 2004. And it came to pass about three years later that I was, I became known as one of the respected Christians in the Christian community in, in the prison. And, and I was known as one of the elders, and I began to exercise the gift that God had put in me to teach. And... When that happened, I, I remember I was sitting at the table with a guy one time. His name was Woody, a really nice guy. Um, and he, I remember him telling me, he said, Brother Clinton, I, I don't want to go to hell. Don't want to go to hell. I remember him telling me that. And I remember me telling him something like this. Well, then just, you know, seek God in his word and obey him and do what he says. And that's all that I could tell him. Uh, that's all that I knew to tell him. I had been reading the scripture, but I had also been under the delusion of so many radio preachers and volunteer ministers that were coming to the prison to preach in the chapel. And, you know, I went to every religious or every Christian service, not to every religious service, but to every Christian service there was in the chapel. And um, at first, at least. And I was drinking in all this garbage, and, and I was taught that God was a trinity, and I was taught that if we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, that's what makes us a Christian. And I was taught that we're, you know, that we're just saved by grace alone through faith alone. And I even got into the Calvinist doctrine, because there were some Calvinist guys there, and they, they drew me into their group, and I started to believe that Calvinist doctrine. But, you know, the more I searched the scriptures, the more it just wasn't making sense to me. And, um, and so... It came to a point, long story short, it came to a point where I knew that there was something that I didn't know. And I knew it so clearly, and I didn't know what it was. I had no idea what it was that I didn't know, but I knew of a truth very clearly. There was absolutely no doubt about it that there was something that I didn't know, and I needed to know what it was. And the revelation of this was so clear in my heart that it brought me to my knees and to tears before the living God. And I had to tell the living God, as a respected elder in the Christian community where I was, I had to tell him, Father, I don't know how to tell somebody what to do to be saved. That came out of my mouth. I had no idea what I was talking about. I had no idea what I was referring to. But I knew that there was something that I didn't know that I needed to learn. And I knew so clearly that there was something that I didn't know that I needed to learn that I had to go to God and confess it to him. And God is awesome. And so he brought me from there to another place. In about three weeks' time, uh, one of the guards came in my cell and said, Ames, roll it up. And roll it up means you're getting transferred. It means get your stuff together. This is your last day here. Uh, three o'clock in the morning, they're going to come and wake you up, and you have to have your stuff all packed up so that you can get on a bus and go to another facility. During that time, um, there was a guard there, a corrections officer who was also a Christian, and he and I used to have some good conversations. And he said to me one day, while we were working, I worked in the kitchen, he said to me one day, he said, you know that there is no Trinity, right? 
and my heart just kind of skipped a beat. I went, huh, what? But I didn't really, I didn't argue with him. I just kind of went. And then he quoted a couple of verses of the scripture to me. And to this day, I don't remember what verses of scripture those were. But when he quoted those verses of scripture to me, it was like a light from heaven that just came into me and broke away. I won't say all of the deception at that point, but a lot of it. It was like, it was like a, 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 a frozen lake. And you take a crowbar and you throw it up in the air and watch it hit the ice and it goes and the ice starts to go in every direction. And it, as he spoke those words to me from God, they were the scripture. And I, I don't I wish I could remember what verses they were, but I don't. But as he spoke those words, it was like all the deception that I had been taught about the Trinity from one or two sentences that he spoke to me just began to break apart my mind. And I didn't continue the conversation with him at that point. I didn't even tell him that he had broken into something that, that was going to change my beliefs. I just continued with my work and, and let that settle down into me. Um, and I remember even several months before that, there was a guy that, uh, there, he was one of the prisoners and, and he said, he was a Mormon and he said something to somebody else in my presence one time mocking me. Um, saying, yeah, he believes in the Trinity, you know, and, and he, he just said it real mockingly. He, but, you know, he never, and he was a Mormon, so he didn't know who God is anyway. But he never, like, stopped to open up the scripture and show me that there is no Trinity. He just, you know, mocked me and said, he believes in the Trinity. And I remember saying something like, well, can you show me that in the Bible? And he just kind of, like, laughed and walked away. So, you know, that doesn't do any good. When, when we, if we mock people... And just tell them that they're stupid because they believe in eternity and then walk away. What good are we doing? That's not doing any good at all. It's just reviling. And that's, you know, it makes you a fool when you revile someone. So, you know, that didn't have any effect on me. But this one man, this brother, he did. And so uh, it came to pass after about three weeks that I got rolled up and I got shipped out to another prison. I was in Phoenix. Uh, and then I got rolled up and sent to Beaumont, Texas. Uh, FCI Beaumont. And... Um, so when I was there, I was there for four weeks, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, four weeks. And that's very unusual because they spend a lot of money transferring you from one prison to another. And usually when they do that, you stay where you're at for a while. And I have no idea what the, what the natural reason was that they decided to transfer me again. But they did. Once I was there for four weeks, they transferred me again. I was like, what? But during those four weeks that I was there, there was a man there who was a prisoner as well. His name was Brian Babin. I wish I knew where he was today. He was doing a lot of years because of a drug charge. Um, but he was a blessed man of God while he was there in prison anyway. I don't know about his previous life. He was a blessed man of God. And I remember, um, and it only took a short time for me to, to have fellowship with him and to begin to, you know, to walk with him. And because he was a man of God and, and the Spirit of God in him and the Spirit of God in me drew us together. And I remember talking to him in his cell one day, and he said, you know, I, it's, it's, I'm tempted to, to preach about the oneness of God, because he was the teacher uh, among the, the, the community there, the Christian community. And I had never heard of the oneness of God. Never heard of it. But I was there because God sent me there to learn about something. Now, I'm not advocating the oneness of God doctrine. Remember, this is a process that I'm explaining to you. Okay. So... He said, it's in my heart to preach about the oneness of God. And so I remember saying to him, brother, if it's in your heart, then do it. And the next time that we had a Bible study, that's what happened. And he started preaching about the oneness of God. Like I said, I'm not an advocate of the oneness of God doctrine, but there are some aspects of the oneness of God doctrine that are true. Okay, And he began to just quote the scripture. And he wasn't preaching the oneness of God doctrine like David Bernard in the UPC. He was just talking about the fact that God is one and, and, and showing me from the scripture, showing us from the scripture. And just like when that other brother, that, that, that guard, his name was John, just like when he spoke to me, just like when John spoke to me, those couple of verses, and it, and it cracked that ice. Now Brian was speaking these words to me, and that ice just began to disappear. Every verse of the scripture that he spoke to me, and I had read those verses of the scripture many times before. 
But I was under a spell. I was under the delusion of, you know, false teachers like Charles Stanley and David Jeremiah and John Hagee and, and uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. I'm sure you know them all. Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagin and, and all those guys. And, uh, and, and, you know, the Protestant religion and the chaplains and, the, you know, all that stuff. And I had been under that spell and I had been taught to perceive the scripture in a way that it wasn't meant to be perceived. And God was opening my eyes at this point to, to cause me to see the scripture as it was written. And when Brian Babin was teaching, I was, I remember I was just amazed. I was like, yeah, that's, it's, I've read this a hundred times right there. And yeah. Okay. Yep. But then, yeah. And the whole of the Bible began to come together. And, um, and God was doing this for a reason because I had told him that I didn't know how to tell somebody what to do to be saved. And before he could tell some before he could tell me the direct answer to my question, he had to reveal something to me that was very important. He had to reveal to me the way of salvation, and before he could reveal to me the way of salvation, he had to reveal to me the name of Jesus Christ. Because before you can obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. And if you don't know how to believe on the name of Jesus Christ, then you can't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ to be saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. You see? So, if I come to people telling people that God is a trinity of persons and Jesus Christ is the second person of the Godhead and just accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and God will forgive all your sins and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit automatically because you believed and you're ready for heaven. If I tell people that, a lot of people might believe that, but it's not the power of God unto salvation because it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. and It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's not even about Jesus Christ. It's about a false Babylonian God that doesn't even exist. And that was where I was at when I was at Phoenix FCI. And so I told God I didn't know how to tell somebody what to do to be saved because he revealed to me that I didn't know something. And he didn't, show, he didn't tell me what I didn't know. He just showed me clearly that there was something that I didn't know. And it was so clear to me that there was something that I didn't know that I had to go before him and tell him that there's something I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I know that there's something and I need to find out what it is. And he heard my prayer. And so three weeks later, he rolled me up and sent me from Phoenix to Beaumont. And I was there for four weeks under the ministry of Brian Babin, who taught me that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God is one, that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And, and I understood that. But I was never, I can't really say I was a Trinitarian. Like I wasn't going around arguing with people trying to prove that there was a Trinity. I was never like that, ever. But I did believe in the Trinity. I did, because that's what I was taught. That's what everybody is taught. I didn't argue with people about it to try to prove it to them. I just, that's what I believed in, and nobody ever showed me any different. And so that's what I believed. Um, but when John said to me, you know there is no Trinity, right? And he broke that ice with, the, with two, one or two verses of the Scripture that he spoke. And then God sent me to Beaumont to be under the ministry of Brian Babin, who showed me from the Scripture who Jesus Christ is, showed me that God is a spirit and that the Son of God is a man and in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that God was in Christ. And all the scripture that talks about who Jesus Christ is all of a sudden began to make sense to me because somebody was rightly dividing it. The first person that I, have ever, that I had ever been in the presence of who was rightly dividing the word of God and it bore witness with my spirit verse after verse after verse after verse after verse. And finally, all the scripture just began to come into focus. And finally, I understood who Jesus Christ is. And when I understood who Jesus Christ is, then God must have spoken to the warden and said, see that guy right there, Ames? Transfer him to Forest City, Arkansas. And so after four weeks of being at this place, I was transferred. And I still have no idea what the natural reason was. That doesn't really matter because it was from God. And so I, you know, hugged Brian Babin and I, and I blessed him in the name of the Lord. And, we, and I left and, and I went to Forest City, Arkansas. Now at Forest City, Arkansas, there was a prison, FCI Forest City. And that's where I was. And I was walking around the track one day. The track is, you know, we have a recreation yard. And there's an oval-shaped track where you just walk or run or whatever. 
Um, and I used to do that. I used to walk you know, around the track just to have some time alone to get some time to myself with the Lord. And I was talking to the Lord and I said, there must be some pe some of your people here. Because I had met a lot of people there in those first three days that professed to be Christians and invited me to their to their chapel services. But I didn't feel right about going to their chapel services uh, because I didn't believe that they were in the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, and I didn't speak against them or be mean to them or anything. I just didn't feel right about it, so I didn't go. And as I was walking around the track talking to God about, you know, there, there's got to there's 2,000 men here in this prison. There's got to be at least one or two or five or whatever, a handful, that know thee and that believe the truth of thy word. And as I was talk, walking and talking to the Lord, a man came up uh, beside me. He was jogging, and his name was Keith Pinkney. And if he hears this, this is his name mentioned in this video, I hope that he'll contact me. I've tried to contact him for years and haven't been able to. Keith Pinkney, uh, a man from New York City and um, a very blessed man of God. And it just had hap so happened to be that he was on his third day of uh, a, th a three-day fast. And he was out just getting a little bit of exercise. And he and I began to talk. Um, and, of course, the subject of God came up because we we're Christians. And um, he told me about a few men there that were in the apostolic faith. Okay. Now, again, I want to make clear to you that I'm not an apostolic. I've never been an apostolic. But God sent me through this process for a reason. Okay, so there were some men there that were of the apostolic apostolic faith, and um, so I began to fellowship with them. And there was a man there uh, who was a pastor. He was a prisoner as well, just like I was. But God had called him to be a pastor. There was actually two men whom God had called to be a pastor there. Uh, they were both Hispanic. They were, were both bilingual, and one was the pastor of the English congregation. The other was the pastor of the Spanish congregation within the apostolic faith. And they began to explain to me about baptism. Now, this was the next step because God sent me through this process, first of all, to find out who he is and how to believe on his name. Because that has to happen before anyone can learn about obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you don't know how to believe on the name of Jesus Christ, if you think that Jesus Christ is, is God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, then you can't obey the gospel of Christ. And you can't be saved from your sins. Because Jesus Christ is not God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. So if you think that he is, then you don't know him. Okay, And I'm not saying that as a slander, if that's where you're at. I'm just saying that to open the door to you to seek God in his word and find out that there is no such thing as God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. That's not written in the scripture anywhere. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the Son of God is just a very simple English term, phrase, that means a human male child that was born in the womb of a woman, and his father was God, and his mother was a woman. That's why he's called the Son of God and the Son of Man, because he's the Son of Humanity. His mother was human. And so when God sent me to Forest City, Arkansas, there was a group of, of apostolic believers there, and they were trying to explain to me about baptism. And I, you know, I was not receiving it. Because I had been taught that, you know, being born of water and of the Spirit means, you know, the first time you're born of the water, when, from the water of your mother's womb, and then you're born of the Spirit when you, you know, either receive the Holy Spirit or when you're born again. That's what I was taught. That's what most people are taught. And that's what I believed. And I wasn't budging. And they began to explain to me from the Scripture, like Colossians 2, 11 and 12, uh, Acts 2, 38, uh, and many other passages of the scripture that show us that we must be born of water and of the spirit, that baptism is for the remission of sins and that it saves us. And I just kept saying, no, no, that doesn't mean that. That's, I'm sorry, brothers, but that's not what it means. And I can't receive that. And I wasn't calling them heretics or anything. I was just not receiving what they were saying. And they said, well, brother, we're going to pray for you. I said, well, praise the Lord. Please do. Please do. And I'll be praying for you as well. And that night... That night, uh, I was in my unit, and they were in a different unit upstairs, so we couldn't communicate with one another until the next day when we were released from our units to go you know, do common things in the common areas of the prison. That night, when I was in prayer, um, I was on the floor praying to the Lord, and I thought that I had finished my prayer, and so I began to get up, and the Lord told me to get back down on my knees. Uh, and so I did. And when he told me to get back down on my knees, he told me to open my Bible. And it was a Bible just like this one. It wasn't this exact one. It had a black cover. But it was just like this one, exactly like that. It's from the same publisher. Um, in fact, I got this Bible from the same place. Uh, so it was a Bible just like this one. And he said, open your Bible to John 3, 5. And so I did. I opened it to John 3, 5. Here it is right here. 
And so I looked at it, a verse of scripture that I had read multitudes of times, and God opened my eyes, and I saw it. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And I saw it. God opened my eyes and I saw it. The seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord hath made even both of them. If God doesn't open your eyes, you can't see. See, if God doesn't open your ears, you can't hear. You will never be able to figure God out through theology. You, all, of your, all of your seeking God through theology is like God is on his throne right here and you're over there in the darkness doing your thing, thinking that you're seeking God. God is over here on his throne. See, you will never know God through theology. I don't care who you are on the other side of this camera. It makes no difference. Whoever you are on the other side of this camera, I guarantee you one thing before the living God. You will never come to know him through theology. Never, ever. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. Because if God doesn't open your eyes, you can't see. And if God doesn't open your ears, you can't hear. And if you don't humble yourself before him and receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you shall in no wise enter therein. You see, learning Hebrew and Greek is not going to profit you anything when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, dead in your sins. And you're going to say to him, well, well, but Lord, I can quote your word in Greek. Yeah, that's very nice. Bye. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. If you don't receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you shall have no wise enter therein. And if you won't bow before the living God and let him lead you and admit before him that you know nothing except what he gives you to know, and you can see nothing except what he gives you to see, and you can hear nothing except what he gives you to hear, that you don't understand the smallest jot or tittle of his word unless he opens your eyes to behold it. If you won't humble yourself before the living God and let him exalt you, then you will never know him. You will never know him. But this is what happened, brothers and sisters. So I was on my knees, and God told me, get back down on your knees. When I started to get up from prayer, get, down on your, get back down on your knees. He didn't say it like that. You know, get back down on your knees. But he said, you know, you're not, you're not done yet. Get, get back down on your knees. And when I did that, he told me to open my Bible, and he told me to open it to John 3, 5, and I did, and I saw it. I saw it, praise the Lord. And I couldn't wait I rejoiced in the Lord so much all night long. I was just rejoicing in the Lord. I mean, I did sleep eventually later that night, but I was just rejoicing in the Lord. I couldn't wait to share with the brothers that had been trying the, the previous day to convince me because I was like Paul, you know? I was like Paul. Well, I wasn't like Paul. And like, I wasn't like persecuting the church, but I, I was like Paul in the sense that I couldn't, what I couldn't see yesterday, what seemed to me yesterday to be a false doctrine and a heresy, has now been revealed to me so clearly that I cannot be stopped from preaching it. And, and I, when I saw them the next day, I said, brothers, guess what? And they're like, we don't have to guess. We know. <laughs> God showed you what we were telling you yesterday. I said, praise the Lord. Yes, God showed me. And, and I began to fellowship with them and teach in their congregation. And I began to teach the, the gospel of Jesus Christ in every place. I remember walking around the track, talking to one guy one time and preaching the gospel. I just walked up on him, you know, as we were walking around the track, walked up on him, started talking to him, started preaching the gospel to him. And after about five minutes, he's like, okay, 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 I give up. I need to get baptized in Jesus' name. I need to receive the Holy Ghost. You know, what do I do? Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's just what was happening with me because I had received this revelation from God. And, and it wasn't from men, obviously, because the men couldn't convince me of it. But God convinced me of it because he opened my eyes so that I could see it. And so that is how God brought me out of the Trinitarian doctrine into the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Because I needed to know how to tell somebody what to do to be saved. I needed to know this. I mean, it wasn't just you know a hobby for me. It was my life. You know, if I wasn't right with God, if I was speaking something in God's name that was wrong, that's a very serious thing to me because I'm going to stand before him and give account. This is not some religious exercise that I do as some sort of a hobby, you know, to keep myself mentally fit or, you know, whatever people might think in the various denominations. This is serious business. God is consuming fire, all right? And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And I was telling people lies, not knowingly, but I was telling people lies. I was preaching the same false doctrine that was taught to me by the denominations who got it from the Jesuits who came from Rome. And so 
God put it in my heart to seek him and tell him that I didn't know how to tell somebody what to do to be saved. It was obvious to me. Even though I didn't know what it was, I knew there was something missing. It was so obvious to me. It was like a brick being thrown at me. <laughs> It, it was obvious to me. There was something missing. I didn't know what it was, but I had to know. And I saw him about it, and he showed me. Three weeks later, he transferred me from Phoenix to Beaumont, and I was there for four weeks, and then all of a sudden, God said to the warden, see that guy? Transfer him over here. Um, which just doesn't happen in the prison system. You just don't you know, sp spend four weeks somewhere after they just spent hundreds of dollars to transport you there, and then they transport you somewhere else. That just doesn't happen. Okay, unless you do something like commit a crime there or something like that and they have to transfer you, but you know, that wasn't the case with me, obviously. And so I transferred to Forest City, Forest City, Arkansas. And that's where the Lord God showed me why he had brought me to Beaumont to show me about his name. So that he could show me about his name, and then knowing his name, he could show me about how to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and get saved. And on June 26, 1999, okay, almost Five years after I was born again, June 26, 1999, I got saved. I obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. My sins were washed away by the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, which is the very blood of God. And I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins by a man named Don Zellian, who was a minister who came in from an outside church into that particular prison and baptized me in the name of the Lord. He was also the one, he was a prophet. He was also the one who laid hands on me and ordained me an elder. Oh, I'm talking so fast because I've got so much going on in my heart. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's where I was ordained an elder. That's where I was saved. And that's where I began to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as a Christian. So, once again, I was born again on October 7th, 1994. I received the Holy Ghost on July 6th, 1995. And I was saved on June 26th, 1999. And it was in December of 1999, on December 3rd, that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me and gave me the commission that you are witnessing right now on the Word Prophet channel, this worldwide ministry. And if you'd like to read about my calling, I don't know, I don't boast about this and I don't normally mention it, but it is on the website. It's on the Sword of the Valiant website. Um, it's it's a page called My Calling. If you go to the Sword of the Valiant website, there's a there's a button that's uh, that's called About SOTV. SOTV is Sword of the Valiant. Um, among the many buttons that says the, you know the different epistles and everything on the top, there's one that says About SOTV. And if you go to that page, there's a video in the middle of the page, uh, I think it's called My Testimony or About SOTV or something like that, and there's two other links, and one of them says My Calling, and if you click on that link, you'll see what the Lord said to me when He called me when I was praying unto Him in uh, on December 3rd, 1999. That's when He gave me the calling that you are witnessing right now, um, 19 years later, so a little over 18 years later. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, that's how the Lord Jesus Christ brought me out of the Trinitarian doctrine into the truth. Um, and so, may this be a blessing to you. If there's any of you who have questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section or write me an email. My email address is always right below in the information box. I don't hide from anybody. Here's my face. It's right here on YouTube. I don't make dramatic videos and hide my face from the world. Uh, I don't hide my face behind Hollywood scenery and you know dramatic things of you know buildings falling and you know, tidal waves crushing cities and things like that. I'm speaking the Word of God. That's what I'm here to do. God has called me to be a prophet to the nations. And when I am, what I mean by the fact that God has called me to be a prophet to the nations is not that I'm here to predict the future other than speaking what the Word of God says about the future. What I'm here for is to speak the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth. That's what I'm called to do. That's what my calling is, is to speak the Word of God in, in the various churches so that those who have an ear to hear may come out of the denominations that came from Rome and serve Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. So I'm not trying to start my own church. Um, I, I'm trying to build up Jesus' church because He is our Lord and Savior. He is the head of the body. He is our master, those of us who are in Jesus Christ. And so that's why I'm here. So may this message be a blessing to, to you, brother, who asked, to those of you who are my brethren in Christ Jesus, 
And um, to those of you also who are seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may know and understand these things. And and, and and speaking this testimony, I didn't make mention of a lot of the scripture that was given to me during those times, because I'm speaking this mainly to people who are either Christians or coming into the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have any questions about these things, about the specific passages of the scripture that teach the things that I have uh, presented to you in this video, then please ask me and I'll be happy to either write you a letter and explain to you or send you a video that's already on this channel that will teach you from the scripture the things that I've been speaking about. Um, of a truth, there is no triune God. There is no God the Holy Spirit and there is no God the Son. There is only God the Father. He's the only God there is. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, proclaimed that. So if you believe the Word of God, then you have to believe the words of Jesus Christ who said, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, praying to his Father. He wasn't praying to a co-equal person, and he wasn't praying to himself. He was praying to his God and my God his father and my father. And he said, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You see, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is no trinity. There are no triune gods. There, there is no co-equal co-eternal, co co-existent. There are no gods that are co-equal with God the Father. There is nobody that is co-equal with God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have been taught that there is, then this video, this is the message in this video, is to present to you the fact that that's not true. And if you believe the Word of God, you have to believe that. You have to understand that. God has said, there is no God beside me. Is there a God beside me? He said, I know not any. There is no God that is co-equal with the Father. There is no God that is co-eternal or co-existent with God the Father. There was no God that was in the beginning with God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? The Bible doesn't say the Word was Christ. The Bible doesn't say the Word was the Son of God. So why do you believe that? Because people have told you that. And they've caused you to misunderstand the Word of God when you read it. The Bible doesn't say the Word was Christ. The Bible doesn't say the Word is Jesus. The Bible doesn't say the Word is the Son of God. The Bible says the Word was God. Who's God? The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's who God is. He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word. All things were made by Him. Who? Who made all things? Was it the Son of God who made all things? No. It was God who made all things. The first verse of the Bible, boys and girls. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And He said in the book of Isaiah that He created all things by Himself. He said, I have stretched out the heavens alone. I have created all things by myself. There was no one that helped God create the heavens and the earth. So if you've been told that God is a trinity, you've been lied to, my friend. And I'm not any better than you, because you know what? I was lied to also. But if you will seek God about these things, he will show you. And if you have earnest questions about the scripture concerning this truth, then I will be happy to help you. There is over... 1,300 videos on this channel. And lots and lots and lots of them are about this falsehood of the Trinity because this has about 99% of professing Christians on their way to hell, on the broad path that leadeth to destruction. If you believe in a Trinity of gods, my friend, you can't enter into the kingdom of God because you can't believe on the name of Jesus Christ if you think that Jesus Christ is the second person of a Trinity. You can't. That's not my opinion. It's the truth. Okay. Believe on the name of the Son of God, not believe on the name of God the Son. It's up to you. I'm here to help you if you desire to learn more about this, this precious doctrine of Christ. You know, when I said that just now, it sounded kind of like sarcastic, and I didn't mean it to sound that way at all. Um, it's up to you. 
Okay, it's up to you. If you decide that you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, if these words are pricking your heart and you want to know more, here I am. Communicate with me and I will be happy to share with you the precious doctrine of Jesus Christ. If not, you just want to argue and you want to try to prove to me there's a trinity and, and all that stuff, you know, you're going to be wasting your time. You'll find out very quickly that you're wasting your time and, and I'm not going to have arguments with you about it. I'm just here to preach and teach the word of God. So may this message be a blessing to those of you who have ears to hear. I'm going to cut it short for now. I've already been speaking for 40 minutes. May God bless you, those of you who are in the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and serving him with all of your heart. May he bring you to the fullness of that which he ordained for you before the foundation of the world, so that you can enter into his kingdom with much riches for your joy and his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Brother Clinton. I'm out for now.